Everybody and welcome to Fox's Daily Stories with me, your first reader, Miss Keedwell. So, um, how this works is every day we will be streaming to you a few pages of books, our favourite books, your favourite books, and you can log in each day at ten o'clock for the next um, episode of the book chapter chapter of the book um, and see who's going to be reading the next. At the end of each chapter, there will be a creative task set by the reader um, that will can set you off on uh, something to do for the day. So our first book is one you might know already by the very wonderful Roald Dahl, and it is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Chapter one. Here comes Charlie. These two very old people are the father and mother of Mr. Bucket. Their names are Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine. And these two very old people are the father and mother of Mrs. Bucket. Their names are Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina. This is Mr. Bucket. This is Mrs. Bucket. Mr. and Mrs. Bucket have a small boy whose name is Charlie Bucket. This is Charlie. How do you do? And how do you do? And how do you do again? He is pleased to meet you. The whole of this family, the six grown-ups, count them, mm -hmm. and little Charlie Bucket, live together in a small wooden house on the edge of a great town. The house wasn't nearly large enough for so many people and life was extremely uncomfortable for them all. There were only two rooms in the place altogether and there was only one bed. The bed was given to the four old grandparents because they were so old and tired. They were so tired they never got out of it. Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine on this side. Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina on this side. Mr and Mrs Bucket and little Charlie Bucket slept in the other room upon mattresses on the floor. In the summertime, this wasn't too bad, but in the winter, freezing cold draughts blew across the floor all night long and it was awful. There wasn't any question of them being able to buy a better house or even one more bed to sleep in. They were far too poor for that. Mr Bucket was the only person in the family with a job. He worked in a toothpaste factory where he sat all day long at a bench and screwed little caps on the tops of the tubes of toothpaste after the tubes had been filled. But a toothpaste cap screwer is never paid very much money and poor Mr Bucket, however hard he worked and however fast he screwed on the caps, was never able to make enough to buy one half of the things that so large a family needed. There wasn't enough money to buy proper food for them all. The only meals they could afford were bread and margarine for breakfast, boiled potatoes and cabbage for lunch, and cabbage soup for supper. Sundays were a bit better. They all looked forward to Sundays because then, although they had exactly the same, everyone was allowed a second helping. The buckets, of course, didn't starve, but every one of them, the two old grandfathers, the two old grandmothers, Charlie's father, Charlie's mother, and especially little Charlie himself, went about from morning till night with a horrible empty feeling in their tummies. Charlie felt it worst of all and although his father and mother often went without their own share of lunch or supper so that they could give it to him it still wasn't nearly enough for a growing boy. He desperately wanted something more filling and satisfying than cabbage and cabbage soup. The one thing he longed for more than anything else was chocolate. Walking to school in the mornings, Charlie could see great slabs of chocolate piled up high in the shop windows and he would stop and stare and press his nose against the glass, his mouth watering like mad. Many times a day he would see other children taking bars of creamy chocolate out of their pockets and munching them greedily and that, of course, was pure torture. 
Only once a year on his birthday did Charlie Bucket ever get to taste a bit of chocolate. The whole family saved up their money for that special occasion and when the great day arrived, Charlie was always presented with one small chocolate bar to eat all by himself. And each time he received it on those marvellous birthday mornings, he would place it carefully in a small wooden box that he owned and treasure it as though it were a bar of solid gold. And for the next few days, he would allow himself only to look at it, but never to touch it. Then at least when he could stand it no longer, he would peel back a tiny bit of the paper wrapping at one corner to expose a tiny bit of chocolate and then he would take a tiny nibble just enough to allow the lovely sweet taste to spread out slowly over his tongue. The next day he would take another tiny nibble and so on and so on. And in this way Charlie would make his sixpenny bar of birthday chocolate last him for more than a month. But I haven't yet told you about the one awful thing that tortured little Charlie, the lover of chocolate, more than anything else. This thing for him was far, far worse than seeing slabs of chocolate in the shop windows or watching other children munching bars of creamy chocolate right in front of him. It was the most terrible, torturing thing you could imagine. And it was this. In the town itself, Actually, within sight of the house in which Charlie lived, there was an enormous chocolate factory. Just imagine that. So some of you might have read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory before, or some of you might have just heard the first chapter for the first time. Today's creative task. Uh, get a bag, carry a bag will do, or any other bag. And I want you to create a story bag based on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And in that bag, you can put anything from the details you've heard today or things that you think might come up in the story later on. So pop items in the bag and then have them ready for tomorrow's creative task and the next part of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Have a good day. Happy collecting. See you tomorrow. Bye.